Hello, Omar. My name's Ben. Do you mind if I examine you? No. First, make a thorough inspection. Look for deformity. The patient should be comfortable and adequately exposed. Get good views from in front and behind the patient, including the axillae. The abnormal contour of posterior dislocation is best seen from above. Is there evidence of swelling or muscle wasting? Consider the size and position of the scapulae. I ask you to stand up and lean against the wall for me, please. Pressing against a wall can elicit winging of the scapula, seen after paralysis of the serratus anterior. That's fine. Remain standing. Palpate along the clavicle from the sternoclavicular joint to the acromioclavicular joint. Let me know if it's uncomfortable at any stage. Clavicular fractures and acromioclavicular joint injuries are accompanied by deformity and local tenderness. Also, palpate the acromion, the coracoid process and the scapular spine. Test for tenderness of the biceps tendon in the bicipital groove and of the supraspinatus tendon. Hyperextend the shoulder to bring the supraspinatus tendon anteriorly out from under the acromion. The next two tests of shoulder movement are best seen from behind. Can you put both of your hands behind your head, please? This tests abduction and external rotation. And now reach behind your back and reach up as far as you can between your shoulder blades with your hands. This tests internal rotation. Proceed with full examination if you found pain, swelling or limitation of these movements. Now can you bring your shoulder forward like that? Demonstrate the range of motion in flexion. As high as it will go. And back down to your side. And back up the way. Like that. And then extension and abduction observed from behind. And back down to your side. This time, can you bring your arm out to the side as far as it will go? During abduction, palpate the inferior pole of the scapula to determine the degree and smoothness of the scapular component of this motion. Measure shoulder rotation with the arm abducted and the elbow flexed. Now with your arm by your side like that, can you move it out to the side? This is external rotation. And now reach behind your back. And again, reach up as high as you can with your thumb. Internal rotation is expressed as the highest spinous process that the patient can reach with their thumb. Now, Omar, can you bring your arms up to the side like that for me? Hold them there and don't let me push them down. Assess the ability of deltoid to abduct against resistance, comparing left with right. Also, check the patient's ability to initiate abduction against resistance with the arm down at the side. I want you now to push out against my hand, Omar. Weakness or pain in initial abduction suggests a rotator cuff problem. The next test is for subacromial impingement. I'm now going to bring your arm all the way out to the side and up to your ear. After passive abduction... Now bring it back down... Slowly. The painful arc occurs on controlled adduction. Is it painful at any stage? No. In impingement, pain would be reported between 60 and 120 degrees of abduction. Now, Omar, can you reach again around behind your back? With your hand now, I want you to push out against my hand. In this position, subscapularis is isolated as the only muscle contributing to internal rotation. Relax. Next, we test the external rotators, infraspinatus and teres minor, with the arm adducted. Just flex, flex your elbow up and bring your arm out. Now push out against my hand as hard as you can. With the shoulder adducted and in 30 degrees of flexion, the contribution of deltoid is limited. Thank you very much.